Did I get that right? Hey, Mimi. Hey, Karan. <laughs> hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Y'all ready for my wrap round clock? Did I say your name right? Hey, Miss Kenny. I'm just waiting for y'all to come on in. Hey, Afua. Hey, Mimi. Hi, Mo Flinster. You're going to have to turn that down. <laughs> Hi, y'all. Hi, guys. Hi, Miss Kenny. I'm just waiting for y'all to come in the room, and then I'm waiting for my Rat Brown Clark, who I'm super excited about. DC Tam Tam. Hey, DC Tam Tam. I don't think I recognize y'all like when I see new people on here. How y'all doing today? Y'all know every Tuesday this happens. You seem like I would be all prepared and I was rushing. The Temptations left all oh, pretty much. Hey, thank you. Oh, y'all yeah, think I look cute. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, every Tuesday it comes. It's not even funny. I think I'm a pet and I still rush around. But I think my rap needed just like a couple more minutes. So I'm on here with y'all. I know. I feel right. I'm on here with y'all now. She's going to come on in the room in a minute. Y'all, Moret is here. Okay, y'all. I was waiting for y'all to come. But now that she's here, I'm just going to join her right on in. Okay. Okay, let me make sure I got the. Hey, Raven! You know Raven came on to see my rat. <laughs> okay, what you doing, girl? <laughs> What's going on? Hey, Carla. I'm trying to hook. I'm trying to. Hook Are we gonna up. wait for you because you know this is an honor? So we're just gonna wait for you to hook up. Whatever. <laughs> you know, I might ask you to. Uh, Raven is on here. She said two of my favorite oh, things. Oh, yes. I was trying to Hi, be guys. fancy. I was trying to be fancy. I have like this thing that I bought from Five and Below. Okay, wait a, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How? Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How fancy are you going to be? Actually, Five and Below has some stuff. That, oh, wait a minute. You did it. Wait. Okay, oh. so this is. This is on my laptop, but I was this thing here. I can't even get it. So I can't even get it. I love the background, my... though. Thank you. Can't tell you where I am in my humble abode, but I'm up in here. Uh -oh. <laughs> People just coming on in the room. So when you're ready, yeah. I will be ready. But you know, because I need you, I need you settled just in case I asked you to sing something. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. I'm trying to show you this thing I bought from Five and Below. Uh, anyway, it's this thing. It's like a stand. It's like a stand so you can put your phone on. And... Hey, Cece. Um, yeah. No, I have a ring light. Hey, Thea, oh. all y'all coming on in. They're just coming on in to see you, Moret, I do believe. Yay! Okay, Yay. I have a ring light. So I have a big one, and it's in the middle. That's where that comes from. So I might have to help you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is what happened. See? This is what happened with artists, y'all. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I think I look okay. You look great. Hold on. Doesn't she look great, y'all? Okay. I had to use right. it up because so you're so cute. I was like, oh, oh Jesus. Uh, 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 really? <laughs> But thank you, and so are you. Oh, hold on. Uh, Carla said, don't play Moret Five and Below Spanish show. Oh, I'm not playing it, because you know I love her. Now, if it wasn't Moret, I might play the person, but <laughs> we're not going to do that. They say you look bomb, so we're going to go. <laughs> okay, Yay. let's make this introduction. Let's make this introduction, because I just have to. Just a couple of words. Aww. So, the trailblazing Stella Award winner. Thank you. More than one. And they call you the princess of praise and worship. I call you an angel because your songs literally oh. were one of the catalysts in saving my life. The Moret Brown Club. Yay! I told somebody I'll be the oldest princess you'll ever meet. So I'll go. You definitely you. are. <laughs> Listen, 
I will be a princess till I'm 100. Do you understand? But you are the princess of praise and worship. That's a little different. I'm just, you know, walking around <laughs> like a princess. So look, yes. I am so happy, happy, happy to have you. I can't remember. Hey, Mike. Sorry, people on here I haven't seen in a minute. I can't hey. remember um, when we met, but it was a few years back because a couple of times. I don't know if you remember the first time you were hosting something and i was a guest of jonathan slocum do you remember uh, that yeah and then i, I brought that Iyala. yeah <laughs> back in the okay, day we'll, back we'll in talk, the day we'll, we'll do a sidebar <laughs> back here that's that was back in the day and and then moving forward a couple of years i brought Iyala when you had your radio mm -hmm. show so I that she so could be excited. on i was so excited Another, i was like, I love her, and I'm just like, am I really in the same room, breathing the same oxygen? But she loves person? you. She but does, she and I was like, Lord Jesus, you just never know. And, that and was she asked cool. you to sing, and you sang, and we were all in there praising and worshiping. Come on, yeah. God. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> hi, Sasha. Okay. So listen, just let me let me go back because maybe I need some backstory because okay. when I first heard of Marat Brown Clark. Um, I was going through a really hard time and I started going to Spirit of Faith Christian Center and one of your other songs he loved and then I heard it ain't over and then you actually came and I was you know sitting back from afar listening to you change I mean every time I felt bad I listened to that song but you have been doing this since 1998 and before actually so yeah my first project came out in 1998 it's called how I feel um, that was my first solo project. But before that, I've been recording with other artists. A lot of people know me from singing with Richard Smallwood, of course, and Vision. But even before Richard Smallwood, I recorded with um, the Wilmington Chester Mass Choir, um, Daniel Winans, uh, Reverend Timothy Wright. Uh, and I was, you know, just kind of making my little trickle into the industry. I was writing, I was singing, I was playing, and I just was trying to be heard and try to tell somebody about Jesus. So, yeah, it's been a minute. And so did you start out singing as a little girl? Like, did, was this your dream or did, is this something that it was your dream? It was. So and how did you know that? It wasn't my dream. It wasn't no. my dream. My father, um, I grew up in New York, um, myself and three other siblings. And my father taught us all how to sing. And my mother made sure we took like instrument lessons. So I took piano lessons plus singing. But for us, singing was just a part of our growing up experience. So it was just like you, you go right. to school, you do your homework, you eat dinner, you go to church, you got to get in that living room <laughs> and sing because your daddy said, get in here and sing. So that's right, really right. how it started. But right. when, when I left New York, um, and came down to Maryland to go to college. And I like to say I got stuck here. That's when I realized um, that it started becoming a little bit of a dream. And it wasn't so much a dream as I want to be a famous singer. It was, I found Jesus real good in Maryland. Yeah. And, and I wanted to tell other people about him. And I was like, Why, what it, how am I supposed to tell people about him? And it was through my singing, through my music. And I was like, oh. Really? But as soon as he spoke it to me, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be singing. And then every, right. everything that day right. just resonated with my childhood. It resonated my, all, with all my growing up experiences and how I used to, to sing and then cry afterwards when a lot of kids would cry before they had to sing because they didn't want to. I didn't want to, but when I was done, the Spirit right. of the Lord would just be on me and I would just cry and cry and cry. My mother would have to just hold me after I was done singing. So when I got the call from God to like go, this is what your mandate is, it resonated with what was put into me even as a child and even before I was born. So that's the thing I think is the is the cool thing about is before I was formed and before I knew, knew that you. what this was, he knew me and he knew that Come this was on. Yeah. And, and so I want to make that point because a lot of people um, really, and even a lot of coaching calls that I do, people struggle with asking, hey, Nick, um, how do I find my purpose? Yeah. How do I understand what that is? But the interesting thing is um, 
he does. He forms, he gives you all of that before yep. when he creates you. So yes. it's like along this journey in life, it's like paying attention. And because this is my second career, right? But as a little girl, I would play dress up in the closet. Like That's it so was cool. my yep. getaway. It was mm -hmm. my feel good. And then when I got older, money, no money, I would go to the stores and just shop for like yeah. hours. And maybe I'd come out with one thing, maybe right. I wouldn't, but I was so happy being in the, so I should have known, but I didn't. <laughs> what he did was brought it full circle for me. Right. So how would you, how would you describe that? Like, how would you, um, and people think it's an audible voice for me. It's never been, it's been in my gut. It's been, okay, mm -hmm. as I, uh, always say that when God gives you a vision, he gives you the provision, he provides. Right. So how would you tell people to go about even understanding what their purpose is? Well, one, I think that there are a lot of people that get that gut or that thing from God. You know, I just, I have to do my references are always with Jesus. Jesus Absolutely. Um, so I think that you inherently know, and sometimes what you know in your gut does is may not even necessarily be what you want it to be so say you're Absolutely. a great you're a great cook and you're right. like okay well you know i i, I like to eat so i cook but i don't necessarily <laughs> want to cook for other people but maybe that's the way that god wants to use you to speak life into somebody else i always tell people all the time if it wasn't singing for me whatever it was if it was cooking if it was shop fashion right, if it right, was, right. you know knocking a hammer on something right, whatever right. it was um i would be all right with it because that would be the way that i was supposed to spread light the light that he gave me to the world so if i was a great right. cook i would feed people you know make their stomachs full and then i'll be like okay let me tell you about jesus but i i'm not a great cook Right. So <laughs> I, I use my singing voice and that tells people about Jesus. But I would just say to you to be open to whatever that is. I would say to somebody, be open to whatever that is. And it may not look like how you envision it. And it may not be the thing that you're honing in on. It may not be that at all. It's what right. he hones in on. I, I know that that day um, that I asked him what it was for me to do, it really was a rubber meets the road. I had graduated from college. I had a boyfriend, a place to live, a car, a job. I had everything that the world says you're supposed to have, you know, in that order. And I had a great church home. Like, I was like, okay, you know, things are fine. This is cool. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. But there still was a gnawing in me, like, mm -hmm. okay, I got everything mm -hmm. they said to get, but this, I, why am I, why I feel, I still feel a hole. What I feel empty, like I'm not pursuing what it is you birthed me to do. And I remember it like it was yesterday. My simple prayer was, I don't want to have lived and died and not found out what it was you purposed me to do. Like you could have you could have birthed me looking any way at any time in history, but you birthed me now and you birthed me like this. So what is it I'm supposed to do with this that glorifies you? And it literally was the answer you're supposed to tell people about me singing and I, as soon as I heard it just resonated and I took off running so I would say if he speaks to you audibly if he speaks to you he sends somebody to you that speaks into your life and it agrees but it with resonates. your spirit yeah. exactly right. it agrees it with resonates. your spirit that's how you right. know and then he will right. continue to send people like a Michelle Lopez that will tell you that what he ordained you you know mandated for you to do years ago is still right. effective even to this Today. day. Today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. I um and I wonder because what I me being in the industry for so long, what I understand about gospel versus the secular or R and B is that mm -hmm. um, we love it, it feeds our soul, it fuels us. But financially and notor the notoriety and I mean I just gotta say it's not the same. You understand? So mm -hmm. I want to know from you, ha has there ever been a time that you thought about even going over to R&B, even going over to the others? It has not. Mm -mm. No, never one time. You knew that when you got this call, like this is what you're supposed to do. So then right. talk to me um, about, because you know I'm a Christian and mm -hmm. God is my absolute everything. Like literally mm -hmm. Jesus saved my life. The thing is, 
Um, growing up, though, my grandmother was, she showed me what a woman of God looked like, but it wasn't very religious. What I found uh, later in life, uh, going to different churches, is that one of the things that shies people away um, is that in the more judgmental of each other and of people than maybe, as they would say, people in the world. Like, how do you deal with that? Because were people judging you and your life more because you sing gospel? Um, oh, she... oh, good, I see. You were okay, stuck yeah, on my I was gonna say, You were frozen, too. <laughs> I'm like, well, I hope I was you, cute. Yeah, you are cute. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you understand what I'm saying? Because I know there's, for me, there's a difference between being religious and me having a relationship with God, which I call spiritual, and a relationship that I cultivate one on one. Right. So I, I, I want to know: Have you ever come under scrutiny? Like, do you have to be super careful of your life and how you live humanly, or because you're singing gospel? You know what's interesting is that um, I, I don't think that I've ever had to quiet down. Um, who I was in Christ. And I'll tell you this, be, um, I just never even thought about doing that. I feel like when you meet me, you meet somebody who is um, two things, that I'm flesh and blood, I'm a normal person, yeah. and I'm just a normal person who gets up, eats, sleeps, goes to work, does those things, drives a car, you know, <laughs> does all those normal, goes to the bathroom, and but yet <laughs> I sing, but my heart soul is to sing for Jesus. I had a job when I got out of college um, working for a defense contractor in uh, Crystal City, Virginia. And everybody at my job knew that I sang gospel. They were there at my very first concert. I'd never done a concert before. And I had two rows of, my, of people from my company that I worked with at the church that came to hear me do my first concert. Oh, so wow. that it wasn't anything that I ever thought about. I can't tell. I can't, you know, I can't talk about it or I'm not, you know, they literally knew I sang, knew I loved Jesus. Some of them, you yeah. know, they just supported me because I just walked around like a person who just happened to love Jesus. And, and they human. accepted that. And about you needed it. him like everybody else does. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. Yep. Right. Um, and I think part of that, when it becomes easy, and I teach this, when it becomes easy is when you are who you say you are, like who you profess to be, you are when no one's watching, and then it radiates when people are watching. You yeah, know what I mean? Um, and I think that's the bigger part of it. Otherwise, if you're trying to be two different people, yeah, then that's when you have, you know, because I just wonder when I was thinking about you and talking to you, and I understand sometimes the scrutiny that that you can get, or, you know, just even coming from a family that, uh-uh, it's our culturally, uh-uh, no, that's, that's in yeah. here. Now, you don't go outside and show yeah. that, yeah. you know what I mean? Because what will people think? You, you and understand that, what I mean? Yeah, and that's true, and that's some people's experiences. I would like to thank God that, honestly, that has not been. You have that. Yeah. I haven't. And like, I'm, I might be living in a bubble or something. No, <laughs> but listen. I, honestly, yeah, honestly. That's he gives us what we need. Yeah, mm -hmm. he gives us what, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, no, I get it. I was just wondering that. And so then along this path, you being married, you have yeah. children. How does that work? Three kids. How does it's that work with a singing career when you're traveling all over the country <laughs> and you have a family? But 25 years is blessed. How does yeah. that work? It, it takes a village. And so I've been very fortunate. My husband is the best thing. Uh, in the world. He has never um, tried to stop me or slow me down from what God has given me to do. And then I had three amazing children. Um, and I tell them all the time, you know, we have these catchphrases that I use with them. And I was like, you know, you, I could t really take you anywhere. I didn't have to worry about you crying or being irritable or, you know, like I could take you anywhere. I said, and even in school, I don't know anything about going to school where a kid's been in trouble. Like I'm on the road and I come home and I got to go straight to the principal's office or I got to stay up all night, you know, laboring with a child to get their homework done three times. God bless me with even temperamented kids, 
kids that I could leave with anybody. And he blessed me Amazing. with a village of young ladies. Now they're, um, they were tw in their 20s at the time. Now they're um, a bit older, having their own families and stuff. But right. at that time, I had a strong village. I still do. Of people who I, I t tell them all the time, like, I don't believe y'all say yes to me for everything. Hey, can you do? Yes. Yes. Can you can you watch all three of my kids while I go? Yes. I'm like, you. I just think, think that's the provision that I was talking about. Yes. That's that provision that I was talking yes. about because that is what God had called you to do. And even yes. though you never looked to be famous, what you looked to do was just walk out your purpose and serve him in your song, in your singing. Yes. And he provided means for you to be able to do that. That's really what I also want people to understand because it doesn't have to be singing. It could be anything. Yep. When he gives you anything. the vision, yes. he's going to give you the provision. He's going yes. to put the things in place. To be, it's like no stress, no strain, no struggle. You're working and you're doing it unto him, but it's not a strain when he is something that he wants to get done. Yes. You know what I mean? And I think that, yes. that that's probably where the difference is, you know? Yeah. I, and I it, had it, that, so I wasn't supposed to be doing this when I was younger. I have a difference. No. <laughs> but now it's all coming and it all came together. So I guess, uh, you know, later in life, he was like, no, girl, you're not ready. You're not ready yet. So. <laughs> but it is, but it is rough. You know, there were some yeah. days where, you know, I would cry, be in the floor of my closet, just exhausted um, from running with the kids and then running on the road, then coming home. And as soon as I got off the, the plane, you know, everybody's like, oh, I'm a rap route Clark. Can we drive you? Can we put you up in a hotel? Can we feed you? And then I get home. As soon as I walk in the door, it is laundry, clothes, um, feeding kids, getting kids. Mom, I have dance. Mom, I have band. Mom, like, it was no oh, you're Marette Brown Clark, you know, you are mom, yes, mom. you are wife. wife, what's for dinner? We know you just got off the plane, but we're hungry, what's for dinner? So it was hard, that balance was hard. I, I was about to say, was that a hard transition Absolutely. to do, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll call my mother and be like, talk me off the roof, talk me off the roof. <laughs> yeah, no, because yeah. even just having owned a company too, it's like, you know, I sometimes wonder, uh, well, I probably wasn't ready for that anyway, but I sometimes wonder because I had a hard time transitioning. You know, I've had really long term relationship and I was married once, but I had a hard time transitioning from telling everyone what to do and moving and being creative and, you know, create us creative people. I don't know about you, but I'm a little OCD with it. Right. So it's like, no, I don't. That's not the right. No, move that. No, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then coming home and, and bringing it down and just right. bringing it back to normal. That was a really, really hard transition and hard on the people around me. So yes. that's why I was, I think there's a beautiful balance, but mm -hmm. it takes experience and a whole relationship with God, like a whole one, like a, a whole, like, a whole, a whole. A whole. <laughs> right. to be able to do that. Right. Yeah. So tell me what has been your highest moment in your career? This has been over 20 years. So I guess the one that always sticks out in my head is winning the very first Stella Award um, because the juxtaposition of not thinking that that was anything I could ever obtain, like it was just so far out of my reach, you know, even though I wasn't like, okay, I want to be some famous singer, we all do those speeches when the war show come on, shows come on, we're like, you know, thank you, God. I want to thank, thank God. You, yeah, it's thank you, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it was right, always right. like, we all got that speech right. somewhere, but we never right, right. think we're going to, yeah, but we never think we're going to be able to give it. And I literally remember right. saying to my mother, you know, um, you know, wouldn't it be cool if I went to the Stella Awards? And she's like, we just laughed so hard. Like, I remember laughing like that's not gonna happen for you that happens to other people she's like yeah and you know and then i would hold the baby and we would go to the stella awards and i was like ha, ha, ha. and then i put out a record and then i was dropped from the record company nine months after i put out the record oh, and wow. then three months after that i got a stella award nomination two of them and then five months after that i'm sitting in atlanta uh getting a Stella Award for Best New Artist. No record label. I had flown and paid for all my family to come because I was like, this is only going to happen one time. One time. Like this, yeah, so if it's going to happen, I, 
my husband. I was pregnant with my second child at the time. And I was just like, we're going. Whether I win or not, we're going. And to have the category done during the broadcast, which is a whole nother thing because they give out so many awards beforehand. But the, the category, both my categories I was in were given during the broadcast. And then to sit there in the audience and have them say, and the winner is Moret Brown Clark and have like my husband screaming, my family. What did screaming. that feel like? like Crazy. What did that moment feel like? Crazy. It because was a- nine months before you were dropped from your label. Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. So look how the, look at God. Look how he works though. That's what I want people to yeah. understand. That's why yeah. that you gotta sing some of the it ain't over because that is the truth. When yes. you think the moments of your life are the worst. God has his way of like, ah, 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 trust me, it's not over till I say. There's something in this for you. I might be teaching you something. There's or other people something. So mm-hmm. nine months before you got dropped from your label. Mm-hmm. Then three months after that, tell me what happened again. Three months after you got dropped. Three from months your after label. I got dropped, I got nominated for two Stella Awards. Best <laughs> New Artist. Yeah. Come on, God. Yeah. So ordinarily, what and so what makes it important is that. Um, you had that label support leading yes. up to award shows. You had, they pay yes. for you to get there. They, you know, they, they put you up in the hotel. You get yes. exposure to different events and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. those key things. And uh-huh. none of that was in place. There was no budget for that. There was nothing for that. So I had so to literally- you pay for all that? I did. I rented a van to, to run my family around. I paid for everybody's hotel. I paid for um, my family to fly. To, like, you know, it was four of us at the time. And um, my parents came, my brothers came. Like, it was, I paid for everybody to come. And no label, no backing. And you end mm-hmm. up, you pay for winning. all of that and you end up winning. Yeah. Come on. But I, would, but I wouldn't change anything for the world. Like, that was literally God saying to me, you don't have a dream that's too big for me to make come to pass and you know what else what else it says is you don't need anyone else's validation but god mm-hmm. to do to get down what it is that he, and it's always so much bigger yeah. than what we even think it is you don't yeah. need anyone's validation so the fact that you got dropped from the label which and and someone's mind will be like okay i'm not good enough and then three months later you get nominated and then yeah. a couple months after that you actually win Come on. Yep. What did that teach you? It taught you all of that, right? It taught you all of what I said. <laughs> you know, it, I think things teach you what you kind of already know, but you're afraid to believe. So it taught me, go. yeah, it taught me that God is in control of everything and that, you know, he's, he's yay and nay, not man. And, but the, but the important thing about that is I did not begrudge my label. I wasn't, you know, you know, no nasty and mean. mean. Yes. I wasn't. And a lot of people didn't yes. even know that I was dropped. Like, this is a story that I can tell now that most people don't even know. Like, I just kept to myself and I said, I wouldn't be here if they hadn't signed me, given me a chance to Absolutely. make a record to even Absolutely. be nominated for stuff. They were very, in, in, um, very important in my career. Right. They had to be somebody that right. took a chance on me day one. Now, whether they you know held on and took a chance you know for the breath of my career it doesn't god matter used them. god used them to put to me on you. a national yep. platform and that's a platform that i've been on for for the entirety of my career that that's good though that's good for people that is good is that's it? good look what you yeah it is good so even when you're talking about it and you're hearing it yourself you're yeah. like yeah that's good that's good because He'll put people, things in your life to carry you to the next level, but that doesn't mean they're going to stay. That doesn't mean they belong to stay, right? So the thing that you did was operate in love and not be upset because when you think back, you were just grateful to even have had the opportunity to be on a national stage, right? Right. And then they planted that seed and God said, come on, here we go, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's awesome. So tell me though, then tell me though, what, what was the lowest moment? What has been your lowest moment in your career or, or life in general? So lowest moment was I just, I'm losing my sister. So in 20, 2010, I lost my sister. And 10 months later, I lost like who 
one of my best, best friends. Um, and all the while, I'm running around singing It Ain't Over. So that was at the height of <sighs> It Ain't Over. So the, the Dream Project came out in 2007, but in 2009 is when It Ain't Over hit radio. And it right. literally, you know, took rose off. up the charts, took off. Right. People were hearing it on the radio. They were playing in their homes. And so at that moment, at the highest, highest moment, um, my sister called me and said that, you know, the doctors say I'm sick. And then two months later, she passed away from cancer. And then 10 months later, the very friend that I was, you know, crying on their shoulder to about my sister, um, he passed away. Um, and so to have to bury two key people and now these are these were two people in my life that you know you have those people that you can share things anything with anything like anything and these were those two people and to lose both of them in the same wow. year and have to continue to sing it ain't it over, ain't over. God says it's over was oh, very gosh was very difficult. In fact, I was singing It Ain't Over to my sister while she was taking some of her last breaths. Um, and that was very, very difficult. Um, but, you know, I still trust God. I still what, 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 God. what made you keep your faith? And I'm saying that because during the time that we're in right now, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people are struggling. A yeah. lot of people that even... Um, believe in God and have relationship with God are questioning like, okay, all of this is going on. Where are you? Um, what would you say? Because that was probably a time that you could have questioned like, okay, I'm out here and I'm singing this and it is enriching and helping everyone else's life. Yeah. Yeah. While mine on the other hand is over here. And I feel like it's, the, it's crumbling because now I've lost two people that, I absolutely love and adored and that I can count on. So what would you say to people now if they're losing hope and they're I, losing faith? I would say what I try to tell myself is that God is the God over my mountains and he's the God, he's the same God still in my valleys. And so where, everywhere that I am, wherever my life finds me, he is still the same God. And so most, a lot of times, like even today, I was sitting on the couch today. I was looking at the news. Don't do it. Looking at the I news. My eyes, my eyes literally just welled up with water. Mm -hmm. And just in the fatigue of this is insane. But it then is. I grabbed a hold of myself and I was like, but God, there, God is in this somewhere. He is still in control. Yes. And, the, and the more I to speak that life into myself and the uh -huh. more I just believe it and hold on to it, you know, those times are going to come. You are going to kind of, you know, have those low times and those high times. But um, just to try to find some way, even if it's just holding on by a fingernail, holding on to my faith, holding on to the word of God that he promised never to leave us, never to forsake us. And even though it looks like he has left the building, he is still right. present. He is a present help right. in the time of trouble. So those things, pulling on those things that I know, and that's stuff that I've been knowing since I was a little girl. When I came home, I was born, Jesus met me in my house. My parents introduced us to Jesus at a very young age. So I'm very grateful that that has been my foundation because I don't know where I would be if I was. If it's not, if it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think it's, it, it really hasn't been a lot of people's foundation, but I think that um, one of the things that I do see that is coming out of these moments is that people that have never sought God before are seeking mm -hmm. him. People that have never prayed before are praying and asking, like, what is happening? And yeah. for wisdom and for him to be. So I think part of that, um, for me, is a blessing in it. Because whether this was going, going on or... It, it, whether it be this when we come out of this, it's like you either coming out of a storm or going into one. You know, it's like mm -hmm. preparing for it. We need him. And I always tell people, okay, so if your way, if what you're doing is not working and you're miserable, try him. It, right, I mean, right. listen, listen, because if you, guess what? If nothing happens and you don't like it, you could always go back to your miserable way yeah, or whatever that yeah. was that you said that you want. But what if? But what if your life changes? And what if? Just having hope 
makes you better because I need, like, I, I need I something don't to like know. wait. I need to throw something at you. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> My five dollar box. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, literally, the times that I was hanging on by a thread, yeah. Yeah. all I had was hope. hope. All I had was hope that it would get better. And all I had was that it, it's like if, if if you could just see even a piece of okay, God. Or even what I do, even in the days that I'm like, like I quickly, I know how to shift my mind quickly though. When I'm like, oh, like when you watch the news, well, I don't, yeah. I don't. Because I think my mother is the news and I'll be having to tell her. But with that being said, she gets anxiety. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. the, and yeah. I understand it. Like I literally understand it. But even in the days of, even in the times of that, what I always do is look back at my life. Mm -hmm. And when I look back at when I thought the top, listen, the times in my life that I thought were the absolute worst moment in my life, like give me two seconds, the car would have been off the bridge. No, this is my honest to God truth that were really, really bad for me. Something amazing always came on the outside of it when I just pushed through. Like I just go through. Like when you say you're going through something, okay, just don't stop. Right. Because it's not, it's going to end. Now, when it will end, I don't know, because everything happens in seasons. But that's what I do know, is that it won't last. Like when they say right. trouble won't last always, it really doesn't. Mm -hmm. Neither do the good times, neither does trouble. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. just prepare for it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm so grateful to have, to even have you on here, because even when we talk, you're like, Michelle, but you're so humble. You're so mm -hmm. humble. And that's one of the beautiful things about you. But I was saying to you out of, you know, being in the, in the entertainment and just helping a lot of people out of um, my friends and people that I know you, you, it is talking to you is so special to me because your songs yeah. literally got me through one of the roughest times in my life. And then your song, I just want to praise you. Uh, uh. And literally, I, look at me. Uh, okay, yeah. So I'm going to need you to give us just a little bit because I was, when I was working out this morning, yeah. that song I was listening to. But I, I am always listening to It Ain't Noble because I think that song is was relevant then. It's relevant now. And it'll be relevant forever because it's never over until God says it's over. Yeah. You know? What you want to hear now? I do. You, you gonna sing for us? What you want to hear? I want to. Okay, the first one. Hey, so you can me. end with the one that, that I was dancing to today. But the first one, I want to hear. It ain't over. Cause I, so I just, really feel like it'll minister to people. I really feel like they need it. Whatever part of it you want to sing. Um, let me pick the let me pick the right key before it goes. Yeah, you know you the singer. I, I <laughs> you see me singing your. I was singing your song though, girl. I was singing it on my. Instagram. You were. I was, like, I was like, now this ain't Moret, y'all. You somebody were. Need to hear this. <laughs> I ain't you though, but somebody need to hear it. So you know, it's um. I guess I started at the beginning, but it's funny. Um, Anthony Brown. Let me just premise this. Anthony Brown wrote this song. He did. Anthony Brown, yeah, Anthony Brown of Group Therapy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, wrote this song for me. I've we met him a couple way. times. I love him too. Yeah, he's amazing. He yeah. we were on our way to um, a choir. I was taking him to a choir rehearsal with me for Wilmington Chester Mass Choir, and we had been working on my record. We were we were kind of just like working on stuff. Didn't know if I was going to record or not, but we were just kind of getting songs together and just rehearsing. And um, we were on our way driving to Delaware. And he said, I think I have, I have another song for you. So I was like, okay, great. He'd already written Sovereign God, which was taking us out. Somebody just rehearsal. said, can you sing Sovereign God? Yeah. Someone so literally just wrote I that in the that. comments. <laughs> you so saw he, had, he had already written that. And then he said, I think I got another song for you. And I was like, okay. And then he, I said, well, let me hear it. Because a good song, I will tell you this, a good song is good with no music. It's good with full music. Come on. Come it's just, it is good you know it's just good so he literally was sitting in the passenger seat and he just started singing i know the odds look stacked against you and it seems there's no way out i know the issues seem unchangeable and that there's no reason to shout but the impossible is 
God's chance to work a miracle, a miracle. So just know it ain't over until God says it's over. Got a smile. It ain't over until God says it's done. No, 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 no. It ain't over, y'all. Until God says it's over, keep fighting until the victory is won. That's a, listen, every time I hear it, it ministers to me. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter where I am in my life because... It is true for my entire life. Yeah. You just got to keep fighting. And I tell people, yeah. like, all you got to do is not quit. If yeah. you don't quit, we really do win. We, we really do, do win. Yeah. Uh, Leon, do you know Leon? Leon Macy? I'm sorry, he was on tour. Yeah. He wrote a young, he's, I love you too, Leon. <laughs> all you got to do is not quit. All yeah, not quit. not quit. The thing is, we, we already have the victory. But we, and we just have to walk it out. And so yeah. the walking it out part is the hard part. God, Jesus is already yes. taking care of his part. He lived, yes. he died, he was buried. Three days later, he got up with all power in his hands. So that means the enemy's defeated and every area of a life that is being demonic or held up is already defeated. And so we just have to walk out the process. It doesn't stop the devil from trying. It doesn't stop him from trying to distract us and have things happen to us that we're like, you know, why me? But as long as we hold on to the fact that we are already victorious, we're already overcomers, we're already delivered, we're already healed, we're already set free, we're already the lender and not the borrower, we're already above and not beneath. As long as we can walk that out and just kind of hold on, then we're walking in victory. Doesn't feel like it all the time. In fact, I tell people it stinks a lot of the time. But just like you were saying earlier, we have the hope of Jesus, the yes. hope of a savior, the Just, hope of a oh, soon coming yes. king. Yes. So, and here's it, the thing. You know, mm -hmm. when, when people say, why me? I say, why not you, though? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Because how do we learn? How do we grow? How do we, how are we, the reason why I'm able to, to speak like I speak and teach women and impact their lives is because I don't been through some stuff. Why not me though? Why yeah. not you? Do you understand what yeah. I mean? And you can say mm -hmm. that in the good and in the bad. Right. But why not? But when you have hope, when you have the hope of Christ, it's like, okay, I know I win. So I'm going to yep. keep pushing. I'm going to keep fighting. Even if I just got to be like, there were days, let me tell you something, there were days that I was like, yeah, I don't want to open my eyes, but I'm gonna open. like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I don't have some days like that. And then, you know, I, I'm I'm grateful that I don't have those anymore because I I've just become clear on who I am, but clear on who I am in Him. You know what I mean? That's amazing. Um, That's but there are still days that I just wake up like, okay, I don't feel so good today, Lord. But here we go. I put on your song. I put on I, you know, because yeah. you can you you literally. And I just said this last week is that sorrow and gratefulness cannot live in the same space. They don't. So when you are sad, if you could just muster up the energy to think of one thing that you're grateful for, I promise you that yep. sorrow will dissipate. It will, it will go away, you know? Yep. So, okay, someone, what, what do you want to, someone said you want to sing a piece of Sovereign God because I, I, I've seen it a couple of times. <laughs> Look, I look oh, at my hands like yeah. this. <laughs> You said I, you have seen it? <laughs> I've seen it. No, I've seen a couple people say, Sovereign God, please. Like, that was like, have you seen it? I, I saw them on the comments. So up to you. Just a chorus. You are the sovereign God. You're bigger than all my problems. And every situation, there is nothing too hard. For the sovereign God. Oh Listen. my. Yeah. 
right. you definitely are the princess of praise and worship. You definitely are. <laughs> because when you open your mouth, it's like, I feel it. I literally am like, yeah, God, you called it. No, you, <laughs> yeah. you called you know it all the years ago. Do you know something? Um, uh, that's all I've ever wanted. Aww. So, and I, and I said to him, because me and him talk, if it's ever a time where, and I'm not saying, you know, sometimes you go and you do what you do, what you're called to do, and it has different effects at different times. You might, I go sing and everybody's tired and they're looking at me like, whatever. And then you leave like, right. okay, I didn't do what, what, I, you know, this didn't feel good. This environment right. wasn't wasn't food for my soul. But then right. you'll get that one person that comes to you and says, you know, no, I'll no. ask God sometimes, like, yeah, I'll ask God sometimes, like, why am I here? Like, seriously, dude, like, what? Why did you send me? It's here? going on. Yeah, I've done that. It'll, I've find, done that. It, it, it'll be like that one person that'll come up to me and say, you don't know what your ministry has done for me. I'm so glad I get to tell you in person or you, I enjoyed you so much or whatever. As long, you know, that one person like, okay, that's the one person you sent me into this for. Okay, fine. But I, I also said to him, the day that my voice is not impactful in some kind of way, then I'm good. Like, I don't want to just be singing just because. That's just never been my thing and so a lot of times when I was growing up people were like I have a twin brother who sings and they'd be like oh yeah everybody knew my twin brother sang but nobody knew that I sang and so when it was time when I was you know saying I'm going to record and make music everybody was like oh yeah but Maurice Maurice is making a record all my friends were home like yeah he's making a record and they were like no Moret and they were like Moret can sing Moret no no Maurice is the singer I always played the piano for him and it was like wow quiet. But so that's what I'm saying. I I was running away from what he had called me to do, e even as a little girl. So even in my, the later song, which is um, I Want God, those the, the ad libs are true. Even as a little girl, I knew his hand was on me. But yet I was still kind of running like, no, nah, you didn't mean me. You, you don't mean me. So that's what we can do sometimes, too, especially as women. We can downplay what God oh. has given us to do. And so Absolutely. I just, I don't know who this is for, but I just don't want this COVID season, if it's taught any of us anything, is not to downplay any of our gifts. If God gave you 10 talents, use them all. If he gave you one, all ride that one until the wheels fall off. Like seriously. So I just, you know, and make sure, it, uh, make sure that you ask God that, you know, make it impactful. Now impactful doesn't always necessarily mean 10 million people or 10 million right. followers. It can be impactful to 100 people. But as long as it's impactful to whoever you're doing it to, that's what really matters. And I, that's, what, and, that's and, where I live. And the fact is, what, what I love about God is he, he's the God of like the underdog. He's the God that says, I'll leave the 99 and go get the one. Yeah. And, and you know, you understand what I mean? Yeah. And so I've learned that even about my life when I thought that I did it the whole, all of it backwards and then, you know, circled back around. And it was like the moment that I got with him and got it straight. I mean, he made the stuff happen so fast to where people spend their lives trying yes. to get somewhere. If you yes. just get with him, I promise you, you know what I mean? Yep. So will you tell us what is next for you? So what are you working on now? So. Uh, <laughs> wait, what? Oh, I, I had to think about it. So, okay, so here's, here, here's a transparent moment. So I, you know, I've got, I've been able to accomplish a lot of things. Um, and I'm really grateful for that. I'm not too, too old that God is not doing new things with me. And I'm not so um young that i can retire yet or old whatever that is i can't retire and whatever the word is so i'm really trying to to put my finger on what it is i know it's more music um but i want to be found saying the right thing singing the right songs like he's done for me in the past um i'm probably the only artist um that's been doing this since 1998 that's only really released four albums i've only had four albums and two singles and that, really and they really. were famous like they just exactly exactly right. so what i'm grateful to god for is 
what just like you were saying what he's allowed me to do has been impactful and it's not based on my timing it's always been based on his timing so in this kind of covid pandemic allowing me to get some rest and just kind of refocus i'm hoping to hear from him what it is he wants me to do so definitely more music um, definitely more writing because that's the gift that he's given me to tell people about Jesus and that's never gonna be done I've got even more so now I gotta tell way more people about who he is and then you know some other things on the side um, I might write a little bit of a book um, come on my, and that'll be, you know, that'll be very anecdotal. It won't be like, do this, do that, whatever. I don't, I don't think I'm that person. I just feel like um, something like this. It'll be interesting. Maybe my little funny stories might encourage somebody that it ain't over, that God is sovereign to keep right. moving, keep pushing, keep going, and just that kind of thing. So if you want to listen to, a, you know, five foot one lady kind of encourage you and you can giggle at the same time, then um, I'm looking forward to doing <laughs> something like that. But you know, um, I want to push my kids. You know, God has certainly answered my dreams, uh, made so many come true. So now I really want to be found kind of pushing them and shoving them to their dreams. So I don't know. I guess the long answer is I don't know. Um, I was in radio for about three and a half years. I yeah, because I brought in y'all listen to you. That's why yeah. I was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, would, I would love to return um, uh, into that capacity in some way. Um, speaking, so we'll see. I, you know, just and I think you're I'm still gonna... a music minister at your church, right? Because Anthony mm -hmm. is at his, right? So you yeah. also have a big church in Baltimore, right? Mm -hmm. you're I'm a at Bethel A&E. Yep, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. So I uh -huh. that was a long. I don't know, but I'm just. Open well, to that's what I was gonna say. Now that you said, oh shoot. Well, I, I'm, I got to be quick now. I'm like looking at. Yeah. I hate when I do this because I just be loving to no, talk. No, and I hate. And I'm a talker like, too. In nine yeah. minutes. But um, I also want to know, just because you're an artist, and um, I think this is, this is probably different for you because of how you live and being a gospel artist, but I do believe that this is the only time in history where entertainers and people that other people saw as out of their reach and, you know, like every, it's a, everyone's on the same playing field just about oh, yeah. right now. And it's beautiful because I think um, I also want people to understand that you are them. You can do whatever it is that you want to do. It doesn't have to be, you know, just because you see them and they're on TV and they're no different from you. God loves you no different mm -hmm. from them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I think this is the only time that, that that is actually happening. So how has it been for you as an artist? being at home and I know money is made when you're singing out and when you're touring and I, I've seen you several times before I knew you touring mm -hmm. right so how, mm -hmm. how is it because I think people probably even want to know that so I've been home <laughs> <laughs> um, and I actually really have no plans on leaving my house I have been leaving worship for my church um, we've been very socially distant um, so that's been online, right? So you go there and sing, but it's yeah. online. Yeah. Yes. So it's been yeah. online. Um, I have a really great husband who has a really great job, who still has his job. <laughs> You're like, thank his, you wife, his wife has lost all of her jobs. Um, but so, you know, but even in that, God is a provider. He's a sustainer. He um, and he's really, really great. So, but you know, it's, yeah. It's, um, it's been interesting. So we've been doing some um, online visuals. Churches are looking for content. So we've been doing some content in that regard. Um, and, you know, trying to just get some new music, I guess, would probably be the next thing to do. So I don't know. I actually, my, to my children, my son is 23. He's here. Um, he started a job. And my daughters are 20 and 15. And so I'm literally enjoying the first time where I don't have to chase after somebody yeah. like yeah. we're all in here we're all safe <laughs> our needs are met and I can like literally sit here to with you uh -huh. and, that and have a conversation and have uh -huh. a come on girl so this, beautiful. you know these are, these were the it was the worst of times but it was the, the best of times <laughs> <laughs> right, right. so 
So, okay, so we're going to look forward to some new music because yeah, definitely. we all just absolutely love you. And is there anything, any uh, thing that you want the world to know about you that maybe people don't know? Anything? Um, that people don't know? Um, I don't know if there's anything that you don't know. Um, okay, then let me rephrase. Let me, let me ask you this. Then. Anything during the quarantine that you learned about yourself that you weren't yeah. aware of? Because I think it's quarantine is making people aware of things about them. You know what I mean? That, yeah, that I'm as I'm as about as bad as a TV holic as I was before the quarantine. Yeah, oh, you've been I love, watching a lot of TV. I, I have. have literally watched the least amount of TV during quarantine. Then I really. I'm up but you're an three, entertainer, so. three and four in the morning. I I, I bind the office. I buy... <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, but I've also been praying more. <laughs> yeah, so, you know. It's Listen, like, do uh, what you want to do. Do what I, makes you so. Do what makes you happy. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. freeing to your soul and, and makes it, it happy. And I think people need to is. know that right about now. But I've been. So you know I, what? I did. I didn't know how to cook before quarantine. I will say huh? this. I've been I didn't know how to cook before this. I was just cooking. Mm -mm. I was just making food. It, it had no love in it, no care. Just like here, eat it. But now that quarantine has come, oh boy, I'm I'm very caring about my food and thinking about okay, what can I make for dinner and how can I saute it and whatever. Well that's probably because you spent twenty something years moving on the road singing mm -hmm. and that's what happens even not just yeah. you is that if, if you knew how to cook you stop because things have yeah. to be done for you because you yeah. don't really have any time so yeah, yeah. so yeah I, i'm learning how to cook after all this time so yeah that's new i'm sure your wonderful husband is happy about that he is but he's good though because he will eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to oh, the cows. yeah no so <laughs> <laughs> he's real good i'm a touch and agree i'm a fine one like that, although i cook but yeah yeah, yeah. He's amazing. so thank he's you so amazing. much for doing this for me Mariah. Thank it was such, such an absolute pleasure it really was I, you know i think you are amazing um i'm so thank you i'm so yeah. honored that you um just allow God to use you and your gifts and your talents to just pour life into, you know, people because uh, we need it. We'll forever need it. And so I just want to say thank you. But you going to sing my little song going out or you want to say, because I got a minute 24, or you want to say bye? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to praise you. Oh, that's what you want. Come on. And ever. Uh, uh. And ever do, do. for all <laughs> you've done, Come on. you've done for me and Michelle. Blessings and glory. Uh, uh, and uh, and are you laughing at me? No, it's, it's like a delay, so we're not singing again. Oh shoot! <laughs> I could have been your backup. Yeah, no, listen. I'm about to make you the front up, okay? You are so adorable. You the next the next one you need to do needs to be about your skincare and your how you okay, keeping okay. yourself so extra cute. And I'll make sure I tune in. But I want to say this: thank you for being a light to um, not just today, but every time that I've come across uh, our paths have come across each other. And just thank you for encouraging me um, to do what it is that I do. This has definitely been an interesting time, and I can't say that I've been on you know top of the the moon during this time, it's really been kind of hard to find uh, the, the, 